All right, today we're going to talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. I'd guess that you probably have heard of the Pythagorean Theorem, probably have used the Pythagorean Theorem, so we're going to move this through this pretty quickly. First of all, the Pythagorean Theorem is a theorem that helps you find the side lengths in a right triangle. And this rule, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, is, is the Pythagorean Theorem. a and b are your two legs and C is your hypotenuse, that side, that longest side that's across from the right angle. All right, so what this is saying that is if I take this leg and I square that length plus this leg squared will equal the hypotenuse squared. All right, so let's see if we can use that to find some missing links. Now we're gonna get a little bit deeper. I'm gonna guess that that's probably all you've done is just use the basic Pythagorean theorem. This video does get into some other stuff and that's really what we'll spend most of our time on. But let's just get everybody on the same page. If the legs are seven and 10, then the theorem would say that seven squared plus 10 squared should equal C squared, the hypotenuse squared. So that's 49 plus 100 equals C squared, 149 equals C squared. So I have the square root of 149. Now there's two ways that we can answer this. We can leave this exact. Now, normally I would try to reduce that radical, but I don't think 149 does reduce. Um, so I'm gonna leave it. But then the other thing that you can do is you can approximate that on your calculator. And so I'm gonna do the square root of 149 and I got 12.21. So if it asks for a decimal approximation, that little wavy line means approximately 12.21. So either one of those are potential answers. Okay, so now let's try this another way. That's just your basic look for the hypotenuse. What if you already know the hypotenuse? In this case, the hypotenuse is 13. So I already know my C value. I know one of my legs is five, we'll call that A. And then you're gonna find the other leg. So I'm gonna go look for B. This is gonna look like this. Five squared plus B squared equals 13 squared. So 25 plus B squared equals 169. Subtract the 25. B squared would equal 144. Oh, looky there, that's a good one. Cause when I square root both sides, I get B to equal 12, because 144 is a perfect square. So that one works out nice. Okay, so I was gonna um, let you go ahead and try uh, practice a couple of those on your own. Make sure you are very familiar with that Pythagorean theorem and how that works before we move on. I'll go ahead and um, wait for you. So pause that video and go practice a couple times. Here are my two answers. Hopefully you agree. If not, look back through my work and see where you might have gone wrong. Um, and when you've got it figured out, then go ahead and move on. All right, so let's try some harder problems that aren't just quite, quite so straightforward. This is, um, well, I got a couple of them. Let's start with this top. These are two different problems. So let's start with this top one with these 26 length sides and a 48. That whole thing is not a right triangle. So you can only use a Pythagorean theorem in the right triangle. But what they've done here, you can see that they've dropped the altitude. And so that forms two little right triangles. And because this is an isosceles triangle, when you drop that altitude, it's more than just an altitude. It's also a median. It's also an angle bisector. It's everything. But that median is the important piece because that means this is the middle. We need to know that because we are going to use just like the half of this, we're going to use this triangle right here. And this right here is going to be half of the 48. So I've got a 24 for that leg. It looks like I'm looking for the other leg. So I'll have 24 squared plus x squared equals your hypotenuse squared. Okay, I don't know these off the top of my head. So I'm going to punch that in. All right, so I've got 576 plus x squared equals 676. Subtract the 576, and you have x squared equals 100. And so this one works out nice for us. x is gonna equal 10. That's the height of that triangle. 
All right, so that wasn't super tricky, but you might have to like break down that triangle or do something, pick out a right, remember it's gotta be a right triangle, so you gotta find the right triangle in the picture. So let's look at this next one. It says the Hubble Space Telescope orbits 600 meters above the Earth's surface. So right here you can see here's the Earth's surface and the Hubble telescope is out here, 600 kilometers. Now, the Earth's radius, which they show over here, is 6370. Okay, obviously this is not drawn to scale. Um, it says use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance x from the telescope to the Earth's horizon. So it's like looking and um, take looking through at the horizon right here on the edge of the Earth. Round your near answer to the nearest 10 kilometers. Okay. So I'm looking for this leg. So I know it's going to be like an that leg squared plus this leg squared, which I know. Okay, I can do that. Let's write that. So that's going to be x squared plus 6370 squared equals, now think about this for a minute. It's supposed to equal the hypotenuse squared. Can you figure out how long the hypotenuse is in this picture? All right, here's the trick, is they told me this was 600, and they didn't really tell me this, they don't tell me the whole thing, but this is just a radius of the circle, and the radius of the circle is 6370. So whether I write it over there or I write it right here, that piece is 6370, this piece is 600, so it has a grand total of 6970. And I'm just adding those two values together to get the length of that, and then you would have to square that. All right, so I am not even gonna write what that is squared, I'm sure it's huge. I'm gonna go straight to my calculator and I'm just gonna take 6970 squared minus 6370 squared, and it's still huge, even after I've subtracted. I get eight, well actually it's eight million, four thousand. Okay, but that's just x squared, so now I need to square root that. Okay, so now what I have that distance from the telescope to the horizon, I have 2829.13. But we gotta be careful with our rounding. You know how picky Math Excel is. So it says round your answer to the nearest 10 kilometers. Well, here's the tens place right here at that two, but the nine would round it up. So I would say 2830 kilometers after I got it rounded. All right, let's move on to something new that you probably have not seen at all. Um, we're gonna talk about something that we call Pythagorean triples. Pythagorean triples have happened a few times here as we've worked through these examples. It's when all three sides of the right triangle are whole numbers. So when I'm running it through my Pythagorean theorem, I get this nice pretty answer, like when I ended up with 10 you know, or a 12. If all three sides are whole numbers, we call it a Pythagorean triple. And so the, the Pythagorean triples that we had previously, um, if you look back at your notes, let's find the ones that had all three answers come out nice. If you go back to that first slide of notes that we took, um, when we solved that problem, we got a 12. Look back at that one. Okay, that one came out nice. We got a 12. And the previous numbers that we were given were a 5 and a 13. So we would list that as a, it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle, and that's a Pythagorean triple. On the next page, we had another one come out nice, and we solved it and got 4. That's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And that's a really, really common Pythagorean triple. And then this last one that we just got on this previous slide, when we got 10 for an answer, this is not, you know, these are getting to be too big a numbers that you don't, you know, these aren't that common that I would remember them. But we usually list the Pythagorean triple with the two legs and then the hypotenuse. The two shorter sides and then that hypotenuse is always the longest. There's your two sides and that's your longest side. Okay, so is check and see if these are Pythagorean triples. If they are Pythagorean triples, what it tells me is that I have a right triangle. If these three whole numbers work for an 
for my Pythagorean theorem, I've got myself a right triangle. If they don't work in the Pythagorean theorem, then it's not a right triangle. When you do this, you got to make sure you keep your A and B your smaller sides. So I got 16 squared plus 30 squared equals 34 squared. And then I go to my calculator and see what I get on that. 16 squared plus 30 squared. I'm just going to do that all in one shot. Oh, sorry, calculator was on. 16 squared plus 30 squared equals, I get 1156. Okay, 1156. Is that the same? And it's like a question mark. Really, I should have a question mark on these. Is that the same as 34 squared? 30 squared? Ah, it is. 1156. Okay, since they do equal each other, I'm going to say yes. That would end up being a Pythagorean triple, and it would create a right triangle. Okay, you try this one here. See if that would work. Okay, and this is what you should have set up. They give them to me in the right order, so I don't have to do any rearranging. 28 is the longest leg. So you have 15 squared plus 20 squared. You'd have 625. And then I'm going to take 28 squared and see if I get the same thing. Ooh, I got 784. That is not the same thing. So no, that's not a Pythagorean triple, and that would not create a right triangle for those side lengths of a triangle. All right, we've got one last thing that we're going to do here, and um, we've used the Pythagorean theorem to determine if we have a right triangle or not, but we're going to go a step further. Like, if it's not a right triangle, then what is it? Well, it would either have to be acute or it would have to be obtuse. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to decide, all right, if it's not right, what is it? And so what, what we think of is right here, if you have a right triangle like this, we're going to look at the length of this hypotenuse here. Okay, if that's a right triangle, there's your hypotenuse. Now, if that 90 degree angle right here opened up and became obtuse, then it would look a little bit more like this. Now, what do you think is going to happen to that hypotenuse if you open that up to be bigger than a right angle. What do you think the length of that does? Okay, well I'm thinking it's going to have to get longer because it's going to have to stretch a lot further to reach that end. Whereas over here, if that right angle suddenly was a little bit more acute, let's say. Well, if it's acute, then that hypotenuse is, isn't going to have to stretch near as far and it's not even a hypotenuse at that point, it's just going to end up being shorter. All right, well, we're going to use this formula, this a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're going to use that, and we're going to compare the c squared piece, that's the hypotenuse piece, compare that to the a squared plus b squared. If that c squared, let's go, let's go back to what we had just said, if that c squared gets, is bigger, making the hypotenuse longer, then that's going to be an obtuse triangle. But if the c squared part is smaller, than the a squared plus b squared. That's when we got this acute situation going on. Now you didn't have to draw those triangles, maybe you did, that's fine. But what we want to do here is we want to check this. For it to be obtuse, the a squared plus b squared doesn't equal c squared. Remember, we want the c squared to get bigger, so it would look like that. But if it was going to be acute, you'd have an a squared plus a b squared and then, again, not equal to c squared. Actually, the c squared would need to be smaller. Okay, um, let's set these up. Let's try a couple. We have a 4, 5, 6 triangle. Right? They've got it in order for us, so it's a 4 squared plus a 5 squared. And then I'm going to put like a box, like what you had in elementary school, like you put in an equal sign or a less than or a greater than. Let's see. Um, 6 squared. All right, so that's 16 plus 25, and that would be 30. What is that? 41. Over here, you'd have 36, so I think that 36 is smaller. If your C squared is smaller, that means the hypotenuse is shorter than what it needed to be. That's an acute situation. So on this 4, 5, 6 triangle, I'm going to say that's acute. 
Okay, let's try the next one. We have an 11 squared plus a 12 squared. Again, put the box in to decide what this is going to be. Okay, that's a 121, that's a 144, and that's a 400. And that would end up adding up to 265 compared to a 400. Well, that's 400 is definitely bigger than 265. Now, the 400, again, this was the C squared. That was the hypotenuse. And if the hypotenuse is bigger than what this, these other legs are, that's an obtuse scenario where it had to stretch farther. So this triangle, I would say, is obtuse. Okay, that's all we've got then. You're going to be using Pythagorean theorem inside and out today. Good luck.